All right, so it's time to put together the body of the robot so we can play with it. Um, there's a couple different types. Uh, the most common that when I order them at least is something like this. And mind you, you can see this one has cracks in it I've glued together, uh, which I tend to use for my demos, but yours will probably be perfectly smooth. And uh, it comes with a hardware kit. There is another type like this. I actually prefer these but uh, I never know what I get. So if you get one of these, awesome. It's got a little uh, aluminum bracket here, which I think makes it really sturdy. It's easy to use, um, but I can, I've can i ordered them and I've specified it and I never or seldom get what I really want. So uh, we usually end up getting these. And the only thing I didn't like about them really were these sort of, um, I don't know, compression fit type things. Two of these things, uh, one of them would fit on here like this, it slides in that slot. The other one is just held by friction here, and then the motor would slide in here, something like this, and the screw would go through, and the tighter you get the screw, it kind of holds it in place. But then what was also happening is frequently I'd get these things ordered, and they wouldn't be uh, much of a deep cut here, and it would be easy for it to just slide off. So. I designed a piece that can be laser cut, or I'm sorry, 3D printed, that um, seems to alleviate that problem. And what you do, and usually if you get it from me, I ship you one of these, unless it's a perfect chassis. I can't, but, sh but you know, I try to ship it. And this notch right here goes around where the switch may go if you want to use it. It still uses the same slots. What I would do is I would set one screw in, one of these self-tapping screws in, kind of get it started. Don't tighten it down. Just get it started, okay? Get it all the way down to the surface. I'm going to pause it here in a second and make sure that all four of them are kind of in place before you tighten it down, all right? So let me pause it and I'll put this together and you'll see in a second. Okay, so I've got this attached. Looks really good. A little stray filaments for my 3D printer. Um, and of course the cutout matches the switch is fine. So now what you're going to want to do is you want to get the hardware that originally came with the robot. You're going to need the long screws and nuts. Just going to dump the whole thing out. So you should have four of these long screws and several nuts that came with it. Now the motors, by preference, I'm going to say you really want to have the wires on the outer part of the chassis. Okay, makes it a lot easier for wiring. So this motor is just simply going to place like this. The screw is going to go through. And it's going to go all the way through into that hole on the other side. And this is stuck for some reason. There we go. The pin right there should clear this just fine. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to put the nut here and tighten on. Do this with both sides. And I'm going to go ahead and pause it and I'll have this attached here in just a second. So the motors are attached, okay, as you can see right here. Notice if you if you messed it up, the plenty of time to correct it, that the, uh, the axles are toward the front of the robot, which is right here, okay. And I've got the screws going all the way through and the nuts on the back, and everything's perfect. You can just go ahead and pop the wheels on now if you want to. They just press fit. And the last thing you have to do is attach the uh, the tail wheel to it. <clears throat> and that's not too hard at all. But notice a lot of these kits come with screws of different sizes. Okay, And if you look, you'll see you have some that are longer and some that are shorter. Uh, you want to use the longer ones in the portion that attaches through the plastic. So take a longer screw. Actually, first thing you want to do is kind of line up the wheel and see which ones are actually going to be used. Okay, so it's going to be these that are going to be used. These four right here. Take a longer screw, put it through, and then use that to attach the standoff, like so. And I'll do a couple of them real quick here. Uh, 
And actually, this kit has a, a differing amount, so I'm going to go ahead and shift to the shorter screw here. It doesn't really matter, but sometimes the screws are, they kind of crash into each other. Okay, and now you can go ahead and use the rest of the shorter screws to attach the wheel on here like so. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so I've got it all done. I did discover it was interesting. Uh, I got a new lot of these and um, the holes were actually almost the same size as the screw head. And then I looked around and a couple of screws had slightly different screw head sizes. So uh, be careful of that. Maybe I'll uh, start shipping it for the washers. So if you uh, get a kit from me and it has four washers, my intention is to have them put underneath here. I'll have to play with that a little bit because that was a little discouraging to see that the the screw fit right through the hole. But these are, um, you know, mass produced in China, and uh, the quality control is a little lacking. So there you go. You got the chassis ready to go, and the motherboard. Or the breadboard, I should say, it's going to be able to sit right on top of here. Fits nicely between these two screws. And we'll go ahead and continue to play. So I will see you again soon.